What's going on guys? So we've just knocked over the first day of the trip. Um, let's push through about a 10 hour stint today. We're just on the Queensland border, about 150 odd k's south of Cunnamulla now. And the um, sun's about to go down. Nice bit of, bit of scenery, nice and green out here for a change. And we're just going to keep heading north tonight, do a bit of spotting on the road and just pull up when we get tired. Hopefully we can maybe find a couple critters on the way and get a bit of footage started. Alright, so we're about, um, I don't know, 400 odd k's over New South Wales border. We're in between, um, in between Charleville and Cunnamulla and it's, um, it's hot and there's been nothing out. It's still about 37 degrees. And it's about 11 p.m. and we've seen next to nothing just a few geckos on the road and um, just seen this guy he was just cruising down the road he was in the middle just cruising down as soon as I seen him I jacked on the brakes and went back and he was still just heading down still just cruising down the road and this guy here is a mulga snake or a king brown and he's quite a nice size he's not not massive but he's definitely not s small he's probably a good five foot he's pretty chunky big big head on him not something you want to get nailed by these guys have the largest venom yield out of any Australian snake so when they bite you they just just absolutely fill you with venom as opposed to the um, actual potency doing the damage. So, yeah, definitely not a snake you wanna get chewed on by. Now this coloration is kind of in between the red and the brown. Um, the, this red this red coloration is um, typical for the Briglow St. George animals in the Northwest New South Wales animals, but as they get a bit larger, they can kind of fade off into this sort of brownie colour, he's a bit of an intermediate but beautiful animal, this was sort of um, the one thing that I was hoping to see tonight in the travels was just a just a nice chunky mulga to film which we've done just watch your hands there babe but um, yeah nice beautiful healthy snake, he's got a few scars and whatnot on him which is pretty typical for a mulga of this size, these things are absolute animals they get themselves in all sorts of trouble so yeah it's pretty uncommon to find one that's not a bit beaten up especially one this size but they'll well exceed this size you'd probably I don't know probably get another meter on this if he stays in stays in the right areas for the next couple of years but yeah beautiful snake Have a go with the head on him. <laughs> nice bit of chunk to him. Just to keep him off the road. There's a few, been a few road trains coming down here tonight, luckily. Bit of a shingle back crossing the road. That you're full of eggs, huh? This is a this is a pygmy bearded dragon, Pagona Henry Lawson I, and she is chock a block with eggs. You can see them bulging out the side of her. We're just out here on the black soil plains, in uh, sort of just south of Bark Holden in central West Queensland, and um, they're in everything's 
nice and green. We're in good paddock. And I just found this little girl just sitting in the middle of the road getting some sun. But you can see, got a car here. That cleaner up. Cute little thing. So it's day number three. Um, we didn't check in yesterday for day number two. We just drove all day yesterday, all night. Um, nothing too crazy really happened worth filming. We picked up a hitchhiker and um, he wanted to go from, we picked him up in Charlotte. Billy wanted to go to the next town and we, <laughs> yeah, and then it, it was like, oh, I could go to, to Mount Isa. So fucking like 11 hours later, be taken to Mount Isa. I don't think he knew what he was in for, but if you're watching this, Ben, you're a fucking weapon, mag hunt. Um, probably gonna have to blur that out, but yeah, so we're just down here in this little oasis having a swim, driven all day today. And um, yeah, have a, have a go at how clear this water is. Okay, so everyone needs to witness the mullet. <laughs> Go. <laughs> So just found this giant cave gecko. We're out here walking the escarpments of Kakadu. He was just sitting up, sitting up in there. I'd love to do a decent clip on this guy, but I'm getting absolutely smoked by mozzies and I'm on the verge of losing my mind. So I'm gonna just get him back so I can keep keep moving and get these things off me. He's got a pretty good bite on him for a gecko actually. Off he goes. Oh, These mosquitoes are yes. just 
just try, insane. I was trying to do that to you. Oh, I don't know. I've got to keep moving, otherwise they're just like killing me. Hopefully we come back with an old belly. Do you want to have a look at him, baby? No, I can't. Baby, they're this not... This is what I've been doing for the past. Well, you've got a lot of them around you. Ten years. Yep. <laughs> look. He'll bite you. Alright, so we've made it to the Arnhem Escarpment. Um, ended up just jumping in the car and pissing off last night. Pushed through another four hours to get up here. Um, God, didn't get here till about, uh, I think it was like, I don't know, it was like midnight or something. And we come up here, sort of. Having a look for some um, Arnhem species. And I was <clears throat> come up here and we were walking, it was pissing down with rain. And we had the most hectic session going on with mosquitoes. Like it was probably one of probably one of the worst that I've ever been in. So it was not fun at all. Just getting absolutely smoked, like couldn't move, couldn't like you just any time you'd stop, they just like surround, like swarm. So we were charging through here, left just going everywhere. You couldn't sit still. Uh, as a result of that, I couldn't do any filming. I caught a couple of nice giant cave geckos, which I would have loved to do a, like a bit of a clip with, but unfortunately the mosquitoes would not allow. And then, yeah, I was pushing, sort of trying to find an Owen Pelly python because I am in the right area and I sort of, it was just, the conditions were just too hectic. So I so I sort of called it quits. And as I was walking back, I looked in a crevice and there was a shed of an old pelly. And it kind of really got me going, like pushed me to, pushed me to want to look. So we, we stuck around and we were pushing through all this wild weather mosquitoes and everything and then yeah we called it quits we got back at about 3 a.m so it's early morning now this morning i think it's it's not even eight o'clock yet um there's no the sun's sort of a bit, just a bit hidden behind the clouds and i'm hoping that maybe after that rain and that cold weather that um that maybe I can just find one basking, just sitting, maybe maybe out here in, in a patch of sun or something. So anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. I'll have a walk around for an hour or so, and if we don't find anything, then I'm gonna go have a swim somewhere. So hopefully you can check in with something cool.
like I said, there's a black palm rock monitor. It's just basking, sitting down there. These things are extremely flighty. It's a beautiful animal. I've managed to actually find six of these in the last two days. I'm going to try and get down to him. so far. I don't even know how that did that. Just ran so far. Such a short amount of time. So it's almost midday and I uh, spent most of them most of the day up here and uh, getting dehydrated sort of running running off basically nothing all day so just trying to get as much water as I can it's hard when there's only little trickles like this you can stand here for 10 minutes trying to get a good drink you see it was running over that over the edge of that this overhang here Counts, but I'm just getting a bit of moisture, a bit of something to get your mouth from drying out. It's pretty much all I need. You can see this country is just oh, so harsh. No wonder it's so hard to, to find or even catch anything here just because of how, how inaccessible all this habitat is. I just gotta be pushing for all these bushes. And I gotta get all the way back down there. Well, sometimes, no matter how hard you work, you just can't find that target species. We got a couple special guests to pick up tonight from Darwin, so I gotta get to Darwin. And uh, got to buy stock up on a couple things. And um, yeah, I guess the next part of the adventure is going to start. What's going on, guys? So um, we just picked up a couple of guests from America. Um, we've got Good Chandler day. back here, and that's Trent. Me. Oh, that's Kyla. Well, we got Kyla too, but we've, <laughs> we've, had, we've had Kyla the whole time. So. Um, yeah, we're just gonna basically take them on a trip, show them the outback, and have a good fucking time. Yeah, we oh, got some yeah. scooies in the outback with Let's the boys. Do this. Fucking up, couple Let's fucking, go. fucking up. Fucking up. <laughs> Doing a bit of road cruising. Um, we're just south of Darwin. It's absolutely pissing down with rain, and we just found the first snake of the night. It's this beautiful water python. It's only a um, probably a a young adult, sub-adult maybe. They get a lot bigger than this, probably up around six, seven foot mark. And yeah, pretty common find here. Oh, I don't know, I'm being retarded. Hey, no, that's right, that's right. That's not the only thing pissing down. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, Chandler's Wildlife? Ricky's showing me around the outback and it's awesome. <laughs> so wet out here. Hey Chandler, when you're done kissing, you wanna come tell us? Okay, but I'm not promising washing my hands, there's no soap. Yeah, right, I mate, that's alright, the snake won't mind. <laughs> I'm keeping the salties away. Yeah, so these guys um, live in these in the floodplains along most of the top end and they mainly feed on a species of water rat that lives around here in the floodplains with them. And in the drought the numbers of the water rats drop. And as a result, the um, numbers of the water pythons drop as well. So 
the numbers that you find them in fluctuate um, depending on sort of how much rain we've had. And in this spot here we're at, it's lucky to have permanent water pretty much all year round. So these guys are usually a pretty common sight and you can always rely to find a couple in a night. Dude, thank you so much for taking me out here and showing me these snakes. This is amazing. Oh, mate, I'm glad you like it. Dude, this is my this first is... Australian snake that I've gone on this trip. Yep. Look at that thing. Look at that. What is that, like a four foot snake? <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah pretty four cool. foot. Cool. Did you show him that scar? Oh, yeah, he's got it. A... It's pretty fresh, too, dude. Look at that. Yeah. It's got, oh, it's got a. Oh, it's juicing. Yeah. That might have been from tonight yeah. or yesterday. Yeah, you can see the two. Look at those two incisions there from the rat's teeth. Crazy, eh? Right on the spine as well. Oh. So lucky. They're such an early animal. Yeah, they, they heal are. from anything. He's got, he's got a couple of scars on the side of his face and stuff oh, as well. Yeah. And this is the same family as the olive python, right? Yeah. The two members of the genus that we have in Australia. Here you go, man. Oh, we'll just get him back. Just out here, still road cruising in the rain. Just managed to find a second sna snake of the night. It's been a pretty slow night. Uh, it's this night tiger or brown tree snake. This is the top end form, which is commonly referred to as night tigers, just from their um, sort of yeah tiger-like pattern down the side of them. Um, they're colubrid, so they're rear fanged and mildly venomous. You can see just had a chew on my finger before, but the venom's not too bad. Doesn't really do a great deal to me, but yeah, if you're allergic or, um, yeah, you can go into a state of anaphylaxis. And I'm fucking done, because these mozzies are <laughs> These mozzies are fucked, mate. Oh, fucking hell, yeah. That's it, snake's over. I Got another water python crossing the highway. Absolutely beautiful colours on this one. Look how nice that yellow belly is, that iridescent sheen. And he's just going across in this in this floodplain. Looking for a feed. Alright, so this is the Owen Pelly python, Somalia Owen Peliensis. And they're actually one of the rarest species of snake we have here in Australia or at least one of the most elusive species of snake that we have. I think the main reason that they're so rare is due to the fact that their habitat is so inaccessible. They're restricted to pockets of monsoon forest amongst the sandstone escarpments of Arnhem Land and parts of Kakadu in the top end of Northern Territory. They're the third largest snake species we have and they can exceed four meters in length. They're predominantly bird eaters but have also been known to eat flying foxes, and I think they could feed on some smaller species of macropod once they've attained that larger, that larger size. They're mainly nocturnal, but they can be found throughout the cooler parts of the day as well. Um, we found this guy about five in the morning, so we'd been up all night. Um, I'd been up for the previous two nights looking for this species as well, so I was basically running off nothing. Um, and this is the best footage we got which is pretty disappointing, but we just got to work with it. So, um, yeah, hopefully next time I go up there and get another one, I'm a little bit more lively and haven't been driving for 17 hours straight every day and then up for three nights trying to find this bloody thing. But, um, yeah, I'll attach a couple photos of it, which is pretty much all I've got other than this, a few average photos. So, yeah, successful mission finding it, unsuccessful mission filming it and photographing it. But, yeah. That's just how it goes sometimes, I guess.